Welcome to another episode on The Fossil Record. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this week's episode, I want to talk about what I've been up to this last year and a fun project that I've been dedicating some time to, the mysterious ball of bones. For many years, I've been collecting fossils from the Eocene rock layers that are found within the Intermountain Basins of Utah, Colorado, and especially Wyoming. This research is carried out through a Pantological Research Permit with the Department of Interior's Bureau of Land Management and the Utah Fieldhouse Museum here in Utah, which acts as the permanent federal repository for the fossils that I and my students collect each summer. This often means that I spend a frantic several months at the end of each year preparing and identifying fossils collected during the summer so that they can be organized and curated once they arrive at the museum. This year is no different, but mixed within this collection is a strange fossil discovery. I took this selfie shortly after making the discovery of some fossilized bones that appeared to contain portions of a skull. The ancient fossil bones had begun to erode out onto the surface of the Badlands, and I was delighted when I began excavating into the rock layer that much of the rest of the skeleton appeared to be present. Rather than jacket the specimen in plaster, I wrapped aluminum foil around some of the rocks to hold them in place for the journey from the field to the fossil preparation lab at Utah State University. Plastic bags were used to hold the eroded fragments of bones, which were like pieces to a complex jigsaw puzzle. I then laid out the fragmentary bones and block of rocks containing bones inside them. Some pieces, like this distal femur bone, part of the knee joint, could be glued back into place. Surveying all these pieces, I felt that much of the skeleton was in fact preserved, but not articulated. Instead, the fragmentary bones were all jumbled together in a very random fashion which would take me months to work out. The identification of this animal was also a challenge, and I came to regard this fossil as the mysterious ball of bones. Throughout this video, I'll highlight some of the clues that led me to identify the fossil, as at first I, I, I thought it was some sort of small carnivorous mammal. One of the first bones extracted from the rock matrix was a tibia, the lower leg bone, which is bowed greatly, indicating an animal that was not particularly well built for speed or running. Next, I moved on to the exposed maxilla bone in the rock matrix, which contains a row of teeth. Teeth are fantastic for identification of fossil mammals because the unique arrangement of cusps on the upper and lower teeth must interlock with each other. Mammals have evolved a great diversity of arrangement of these cusps and basins, which are often unique at the species level. I knew that if I could expose the occlusal surface of the teeth, I would have a good sense of what type of animal this fossil was. However, this process was very delicate and I had to move slowly. This is a time-lapse video. It's highly sped up and well, oh gosh, it is terrifying to watch. You can see that I removed um, here an additional bone that was pressed against the, the maxilla. I got this piece free and it's, it's a bit bizarre. I don't know exactly what's going on here. We have, we have this piece, which I thought might be part of like the pelvis here. But I don't know. Time to do more rock removal. I'm using a pneumatic micro jack, which is like a mini jackhammer with a needle that moves very quickly back and forth against the rock, chipping pieces away. I work wherever I see rock matrix and try to avoid the fossil, which is often softer than the rock that encases it. It's very easy to have pieces of the bone chip off and break during the process, so I have to be very careful. Now to prevent that and hold the, together the fossil, 
I frequently apply archival glue dissolved in acetone, which helps strengthen the fossil. Note that this video is sped up about a thousand times. Um, otherwise, it would be extremely boring to watch. There is some satisfaction of watching this video at this speed to see progress in the removal of the rot matrix. However, it is easy to get overzealous in the removal of rock. As I was filming that, a kind of disaster struck and I broke off that proto cone, that little cusp on that tooth, but I got fixed. So all is well. We're starting to reveal those. I'm going to have to switch to more fine, uh, a smaller tool, air scribe. A really nice infraorbital frame in there, which means this is a maxilla. These are upper teeth, or the upper jaw, and uh, you can see the second and first and fourth and third premolars. And I have the, th the third um, molar on the other one, so kind of exciting. I think this broke off from uh, the other block, um, so this maxilla got detached from the skull. I don't know how much of the skull is going to be there when I get this all prepped up, but it looks like the skull is partly disarticulated, which is, you know, kind of sad. It'd be nice to have this fully articulated, but this is nice. We got some, some teeth. Um, it's nerve-wracking to prep these things out because um, this these enamel that makes that shiny black tend to want to pop out really easily. So getting this all prepped is, is nerve-wracking because it takes a lot of time. You can see I have a crack right through there that I keep having to reinforce. Hoping to keep this together. I start to use my tiny pneumatic micro jack and to be more careful going forward with the preparation of this maxilla bone. At this point, I've exposed much of the surface of the teeth. One thing that surprised me was the lack of carnassial or sharp edges between these teeth, indicating that this fossil is not a carnivore or creodont, as I first believe. Instead, the upper molars are triangular shaped with tall, blunt cusps. This animal looks more like an omnivore than a strict meat eater. But what is it? The process of preparation continues on ever more slowly, but I'm pretty proud of my preparation of this maxilla. Now it's time to move on to the biggest block of All rock. Right. So this is after about uh, an hour's worth of, of scratching on this. Um, I'll show you what I have so far. So I've been working a lot on this surface here. And on this back surface, back over here, we have the skull. So this is the top of the skull. Um, the, the frontal here, kind of the brain case, the top of the nose. Um, this piece over here is really interesting, and I think this is part of the lower jaw that uh, is in a weird position. So the tooth is right there, I think, and this is the part of the dentary. Um, then, as we turn over here, um, in here I started to uncover pieces of, I think, some isolated teeth that have come loose out of the dentary. So I think that that makes sense, that this is part of a lower jaw that's smashed into here. And then I encountered this fun little bone, um, which is right here, which I don't know what it is yet. Um, I'll have to keep prepping it and see if I can figure out what that is. And then down in here, we have a vertebrae. And my hope was basically to kind of cut through here so I could isolate the vertebrae and kind of prep on it. I started to uncover the other side here um, and try to prepare it so I could get it split away, away from the skull. I've been not preparing this face here. Um, 
And the reason for that is that this is too close to the skull. So I want that to be the last part that I'll be prepping out as I get to that point. I haven't prepped too much on this side here. Mostly I've been hitting this face here um, and trying to get through as much of this as possible. You can see that the skull is kind of lying in this origin. So this is the back of the skull. This is the front of the skull. This is where the nose, uh, this would be the, the back of the head here. So I'm gonna try to get this, as much of this face prepared, but I'm gonna be starting to run into some bone as I'm going through. Curious to see what this is. Um, so far it looks, I don't know what it is. It might be part of the a limb bone maybe. Um, don't know, there's no teeth in it, doesn't look like, so probably not the jaw. And I'm hoping that this is like the axilla, uh, the, or the, uh, the atlas. Uh, vertebrae uh, right there but we'll see we'll see because I want it to be a nice nicely preserved and I can prep it out as I work on it this is really slow going um, and as I'm marching through here I'm taking a lot out of this and just work being really taking my time with it and uh, avoiding as much as this until later um, so I can get as much of this kind of just mass taken down um, so, yeah, there's an hour's worth of work. Two hours worth of work, actually. This is my little prepping station I have. I have this little uh, Lazy Susan that I can spin things around, and then I have this light and magnifying glass so that I can uh, look through as I'm prepping stuff, um, if it's small. And uh, yeah, it works out pretty good. And then I got this shot back here that kind of uh, is my suction for sucking out all the dust so it doesn't get too dusty. And it works really great. I like this little setup that I have here and uh, uh, it works fantastic. All right, so I'm starting to uncover the lower denry here. At least I believe that's what it is. And I uncovered quite a bit of, and then I apply a little glue onto it with this brush. And one of the things you have to be really careful with, and this kind of illustrates it, that as soon as I expose the bone, put a little glue on it, but when I put that glue on it, it makes it very fragile uh, because it has a lot of acetone and the acetone kind of is evaporating, expanding, makes it wet. So the bone starts to want to crumble away as soon as you apply the glue. You have to wait for it to dry um, because it becomes really weak. And you can see like all these little micro uh, cracks in this bone. And so it just wants to fall apart as soon as you release it from the matrix. So when it gets exposed out of the rock, it just wants to explode. So I gotta hold it together. And by doing that, by applying some glue to it and then stopping and taking some time. So um, then I move on to some place else. So trying to hold everything together is, is always a challenge. And as we get closer to the bone, as you can see, we have the skull here. We have the denary here. We've got some odd bones here. And I got some bone right here, so I can't go through here. And then we got the vertebrae here. So this thing is, is disarticulated. So obviously you don't have your lower jaw on top of your, your head here. So it's basically kind of a ball of bone, uh, which is, I think, what I'll call this video, a ball of bone. All right, I'm whittling this thing away. Um, so here we have the top of the skull. Uh, we have this really nice occipital crest here on the back of the skull for really strong jaw muscles, the attachments, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, I've run into some weird things. So I think this is still the lower jaw, but as I was prepping it down in this hole, I don't know if you can see it in there. Uh, turn the light. And look in that hole there. There's um, some upper teeth. There's a molar there. There's another molar here. These are upper teeth, uh, which is kind of weird. It means that I don't think that the upper teeth are gonna be in this skull. <laughs> um, so this is the top of the skull and I'm hoping to get down underneath it. Um, it's just kind of crazy. I've exposed uh, the occipital 
uh, condyles. There's one here and one here, so, and that means that this is the back of the skull. I'm a little worried about this crack right here um, that's going through here because if this were to chip off, it would take off the top of the skull. So I gotta be careful with that. I got a caudal vertebrae here. <laughs> One of those big honking tail, tail vertebrae. We've got another vertebrae down here. And I don't know exactly what this is. It's a limb bone or something. So, so we got, got a, I don't know, it's just a jumble of bones. It's really articula uh, disarticulated. Um, so I'm kind of slowly exposing the top of the skull here and then putting down a layer of glue to keep it nice and strong. Um, I'm worried about this thing um, and the fact that I found this upper jaw here has me thinking that the the vertal, ventral surface of the skull, this is the dorsal, the top surface of the skull, is going to be in pretty bad shape. So I'm um, just working my way Trying to get rid of as much of this um, rock matrix uh, around this fossil and expose it as best I can. Been working on it for a while now, and yeah, it's slow going. And uh, as I work more and more, I'm getting more and more bones to, to ex expose, and so I have to work a little bit slower. So, uh, ways to go here. So, it's coming along pretty good. Um, this is the big <laughs> mess of bones. Um, still working on it. Here we have the top of the skull. This weird bone here, which I think is a denary. Don't know, I haven't confirmed that yet. Uh, we got these weird teeth just totally out of place here. I am gonna call this as the uh, calcaneum uh, right here, the calcaneus. It's uh, an ankle bone. I believe that this this looks is beginning to look like the calcaneum, um, which is cool. This is a nice vertebrae. You can see we got the uh, nice lumbar vertebrae um, at the two sides, which are really nice. It's a big, big strong vertebrae here. Um, I still got a lot of matrix in here. I got a caudal vertebrae here. Uh, this is the other side of the skull. I think this might be the patella right here. Um, and then I don't know what this bone is. It's, it's a long bone and it starts up here, um, and it's heading pretty far down in there. So I don't know what this is. It, it looks like it could be a radius maybe or something like that. I don't know. Um, so my biggest problem is I want to kind of keep it, I'm thinking I'm trying to keep it in one block and just try to keep knocking down. I'm super nervous about these cracks up here and I might have to address this next um, and clean up this part here and begin exposing stuff um, as I work through and uh, and then also like work through this part down here see what's going on there and then also get in underneath this, this part here so kind of working my way trying to keep, keep it all together um, and uh, I think it's looking good. I'm actually pretty impressed so far. Um, I love the top of the skull, it's looking nice. So, whew. Looking at this thing, I, I'm just completely baffled by how mixed up it is. Um, the more I'm working on it, the more I feel bad for this little creature um, in its process of being fossilized. It is completely, totally disarticulated. Um, I don't know what this bone is. I think it might be a, a radius or something, but it's very long, so it goes down to here. Um, just uncovered that. This is that lower jaw. I still believe it's a lower jaw um, looking at it, and I'm hoping uh, when I look at, at this end, I can see that there's there's a tooth root there so it was smashed up against the skull which is just completely crazy um still working on this being very very cautious in in getting this cleaned out um here's that caudal vertebrae here <laughs> tail so that's the part of the tail this is part of the arm this is part of the lower back 
This is part of the ankle. <laughs> and then I have no idea how these teeth down here uh, got to be there. <laughs> so this thing, poor thing, was just like a completely disarticulated skeleton. It's it's all like within a really small area. As the more I prep it out and clean it up, the more I realize that it was all squashed up. But it is completely disarticulated. Um, I'm getting getting things put together. One of the challenges is the more expo expose, uh, the less there is to kind of grab hold of, to hold as I'm working on it. So, um, so hopefully, I think at some point these bones are probably gonna start coming apart uh, from the matrix and I'll have to kind of work on them uh, individually as I work on it. But uh, yeah, it's coming along, it's coming along pretty good. Um, I wish that there was, uh, it was articulated, uh, and a nice skeleton instead of this weird mash of, of bone, but, um, but yeah, kind of fun to work on. So, I'm working on this guy, um, not much matrix, and I'm, I'm gonna be working uh, with a smaller um, air scribe here. Um, I got my teeny one. Let me show you what that one looks like here. Uh, so this is a really small one, and so I can go in and look at some of the details, particularly around the skull. Uh, of this and uh, the more I prepare this <laughs> specimen the more uh, I kind of realize like it's not as great as I was hoping um, here's those those upper teeth um, so I think I'm thinking I don't know I think this might be uh, part of the maxilla maybe here here's that calcaneus right radius there's that vertebrae see the process going across. I think this is still the dentary. I'm working on getting it exposed, but it's impinging on the skull, which is kind of crazy. And of course the teeth are against this. I'm hoping that I get at least a nice molar out of it as I'm prepping. Um, this guy has a huge crest and, and this has become kind of my problem. Um, I have to be really careful back here because um, uh, the crest is really thin, so this bone is like super thin up here. You can probably see that on the crest in the back of the skull. It has this really, really high crest, um, probably for attachments of big neck muscles and then head muscles that are coming, or jaw muscles that were coming down like this, the temporalis. Um, and then these huge like nuchal uh, crest, which is this crest here for the longissimus muscles and and back, uh, neck muscles that would come across. Um, got the two occipital condyles. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, it has a, I haven't exposed this here. This is a caudal vertebrae here. Um, it's got this little wing on it. So probably some big, massive uh, tail muscles on this guy. Um, and then, yeah, this is that, that really nice lumbar vertebrae. Um, Calcaneus, this is, I think, the sesamentacular ses uh, facet here for the astragalus. And then here we have the, um, actually, this would be the, the facet for the astragalus. And then maybe, uh, I don't know. I, I thought I had a patella back over here. Um, it popped off. I don't think it is. It might be part of a sesamoid or something. Um, one of the neat things is as you prep it, you can get these like little foramen. Um, that you can see here for blood vessels that pass through here. Um, and then I'm, I'm hoping that I can get the basocrania um, looking nice. I'm, it looks a little mussed up. Uh, let's see if I can get in there a little bit and show you. Um, so I got, I got some prepping to do underneath there. It's slow going. Um, you can see that lower jaw that's <laughs> wedged there. I don't know how these teeth are going to articulate with it. Um, 
it's still one piece. I, I thought that eventually at this point, um, it would be a multiple pieces. Um, it's looking, it's looking pretty crazy. Um, this is kind of upsetting me a little bit. There, this crest here, I was hoping I can get more of it, but it's just not preserving very well. So I have this reinforced here. So it's just, yeah, slow going. Oh, been working on it for oh, a number of weeks now, and uh, it's just come down and spend an hour or two on it uh, each day, and uh, just trying to get it all uh, cleaned up. Um, yeah, it's it's funny because it's gotten so small. Um, this block was really big when it first started out, and these are the bones that are left in the in the matrix. So yeah. So anyway, this is this has been uh, one of my prep jobs, and I'm hoping to get it uh, finished up soon. It's way overdue getting it done, but I want to take my time with it, and make sure it's it's turning out cool. Um, so yeah. Um, so now, now comes the, the work of, uh, working on it and making it look cool. Well, here's all of the pieces of the skeleton put together. I've matched them up with a printout of a skeleton of a small mammal to see what we have here. Um, and I thought I would add a few more clues so you could see if you identify, can identify this fossil. Um, one of the first clues I noticed was that tibia, that really bent tibia. And on the distal end, I noticed that the tibia is actually fused to the fibula, a very important characteristic in this group. Uh, rarely happens in mammals, especially mammals of this size. Uh, so the fusion of the tibia and the fibula at the distal end and this very bowed tibia is very characteristic of this, of this animal. Uh, the other thing I noticed was these incredibly strong tail vertebrae, big, robust caudal vertebrae. These are the tail vertebrae. So these, this animal had very strong tail muscles. Um, so both of these, a, a bent tibia and strong tail muscles, seem to indicate that this was a swimming mammal. And another thing I noticed that was very difficult to prepare was this big, huge crest on the skull in the occipital region. And this is for attachments of strong neck muscles and probably some jaw muscles, but uh, very strong um, muscles associated with the neck and the jaw. Um, probably the neck was used in swimming. Um, so we're like a butterfly strip sort of stroke with the neck. So very strong neck, very strong vertebrae, um, very strong, uh, arms here. Um, here we have the, the shoulder joint. So, um, and then of course we have the teeth that led us to help identify it. And it was actually the teeth that was the most helpful for me at least to identify this to a genus called Panelestes. Now, Panelestes is often compared to a living mammal that lives today and here in North America. Uh, and this is a skull of it. Um, so this is a skull of a river otter, modern day river otter. Now, river otters live, um, are sort of fairly aquatically adapted, um, and they share a lot of the features that we see in the skeleton. So for example, if you look on a river otter right on, we see this opening down here. This is the infraorbital opening underneath the eye socket, which is up here, and the nose, the nares. And that opening there, we also see that in our fossil. In fact, we saw that when we were prepping the maxilla, a big, big infraorbital frame and a big opening there. And that is for blood vessels and nerves to pass through there to the facial region. And in modern otters, this is a very good indicator of really big whiskers um, and a big fleshy nose. It's very characteristic of modern otters. So our fossil here, Panelestes, likely also had a very fleshy uh, nose, uh, also with big whiskers, um, probably helping it to find food in the water, um, probably small invertebrates and crustaceans in the water that fed upon. Now, modern otters are not related to this fossil. If we open up the jaw of a modern otter, we can see why. So this is a modern river otter, and you'll notice that this tooth here, 
upper tooth has this really strong um, cutting blade going across there. That's a carnassial, and that's very characteristic of all members of the carnivora uh, order of mammals. And so river otters are placed within the carnivora. Um, if we look at the teeth of our fossil here, they don't have any carnassial teeth. They're kind of more blunt in shape, kind of hard to see there. Um, more triangular, they have little hypocones, kind of elongated. And these guys are belong into their own order, the panelestids, uh, or the panelesta. Um, now, panelestids are really interesting. They, they lived in the Paleocene and Eocene, and they're found in North America and Europe. Uh, during the Eocene period, and they are often confused with otters, um, but they are otter-like mammals that live during the Eocene, and they go extinct at the end of the Eocene, um, but a very unique and interesting group of mammals. Well, we solved it. This fossil skeleton is a member of the genus Panelestes. Um, now, there are a few other well-preserved um, panelested mammal skeletons that are known out there. The smaller genus Paleosonopa, uh, which is found in the Middle Eocene Green River Formation of Wyoming, and the European Buxelestes, which is found in the Messel uh, uh, fossil site in Germany. Now, it's important to note that these are not true otters. Uh, so what type of mammal are they actually related to <laughs> if they're not otters? And that's a good question because, um, well, the recent phylogeny of Thomas Halliday and others have placed them kind of between creodonts and pangolins, but they may have just basically stemmed off of an early Paleocene survivor of the end Cretaceous mass extinction. Now, panelestids as a group would go extinct at the end of the Eocene, and the modern otters that we have today, um, they belong to uh, the Mustelidae family of the order Carnivora, which includes weasels. And they would not show up in the fossil record until the Miocene, around 25 million years ago. So they're, they're, they're not closely related to each other. So um, I really want to thank you for joining me in this very long video that was many weeks and months uh, undertaking in the fossil preparation. I'm very excited to be making uh, YouTube videos again for this next year after a fairly long absence. Um, I really want to thank my Patreons who have been pushing me uh, to return to making videos about the fossil record and this exciting new year. Um, so I'm committed to making a new video, hopefully each week, if everything works all right. Um, so I'm very excited to be back, and uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to see new content that should be appearing on my YouTube channel uh, for the next year. Take care, and thanks for following me.